Hi friends, welcome to Ofa Studies YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to discuss about an important question which everybody is asking me. Will AI replace data engineers? Uh, so let me address this question. Uh, the last video what I did was uh, how AI transforming data engineering. Uh, when when subscribers seeing that video, they felt uh, there might be chances that AI will replace the data engineers. Is that going to happen really? So that's the main question. Let me try to address that question in this video. My answer for this question is not entirely. AI will not replace data engineers entirely, but it will significantly transform the role. That means the way data engineers work or the work expected from data engineers might change very significantly because of the AI. How? I am going to address that with the couple of slides now. So what AI can automate in data engineering? So firstly, let's understand that. Before, data engineers used to create ETL or ELT pipelines by themselves. That means they used to write the Python scripts, uh, which will extract the data from some APIs and maybe perform some transformation and maybe load into the sync locations. That, we, that means data warehouses. These things manually, uh, data engineers used to write the code for that. Now, with AI, most of the Python script or any other script what you write can be generated automatically using AI. You no need to sit and write the code. AI can help you to give that code. So your job may be to fix the code if something is missing there. So AI can automate that part of it. And then the data quality checks part. That means usually we will try to write a, a SQL queries to check if there is any missing values or duplicates, all that kind of a things. But even that SQL queries can be written by AI now. You no need to, I mean, a data engineer, no need to sit and write that SQL queries. Uh, AI can help to automate that step where it will perform the data quality checks for you by writing a SQL queries. Infrastructure provisioning is the third part. What that means, uh, assume you are a Azure data engineer, uh, you might need a storage account, you might need a data factory, Synapse, you might need um, some SQL, uh, you, you need a lot of Azure services. Uh, you need that whole infrastructure to be ready for you. Then you can develop your pipelines, right? So that entire infrastructure development can be automated using AI now. We don't need to sit and create our ARM templates and Terraforms and buy zip code to generate that whole infrastructure for us. AI can help you to build that whole infrastructure or provision that whole infrastructure for you automatically. So that part, AI can automate again. And then the monitoring and alerting. Uh, what that means is, whenever you develop some solution, uh, even in data engineering, you need to continuously monitor and uh, get some alerts out of it. Something is going bad in the data or maybe pipelines are not working. Uh, maybe data is expected in certain range of values, but data is com coming very big or very low. Oh, that means anomaly, right? So anomaly detections, failures in the pipeline, these kind of a things, uh, ideally we have to set up some custom logic there to monitor and get the alerts. But now with AI, this can be automated. AI can check the data continuously and find out if there is any uh, anomaly in the trend of the data and it can immediately flag that anomalies to the data engineers. So these are all things like ETL pipeline generations, data quality checks, infrastructure provisioning, monitoring and alerting. These are all the main areas where AI can automate most of the work when we talk about data engineering space. But still, there are some areas we, where we need a human data engineer there to work on it. So what are there? L let's move to the next slide. So here I listed few uh, where we still need the human data engineers to work on them. Uh, what are those? Like firstly is architecting scalable systems. So what this means is, as I mentioned an example, AI, we cannot fully rely on AI to choose which service to go where depending upon business and company needs. Uh, because AI cannot fully understand uh, the business needs or the company needs. So the, the suggestions what AI gives you to choose any service to fit the whole architectural solution might not work, right? So we need a, uh, a proper human data engineer there to choose 
which service to go maybe it is a data bricks maybe it is a synapse uh, or how how it has to be fit in the whole architecture of the solution so that entire architecturing part still we need human data engineers uh, and uh, it it will be with human data engineers so we need to improve ourselves there right and the next thing is understanding the business context uh, for example let's assume you are so all these data engineering projects are working on some kind of a business data so that we can get some meaningful insights from it and we can do some business uh, decisions right so we need to understand the business the context of the business for example let's assume uh, in the data where i am working there is something called inactive users uh, we need to take the inactive users count per month or per year ye cannot fully understand the definition of it right so because inactive users might change business to business domain to domain so a human judgment for any business context data uh, is always needed and uh, that means a data engineer decision making and implementation is needed there it's not like ai can fully do that because because at the end of the day data engineering solutions are on top of some business data so understanding that business context will help to develop a better business logic otherwise that logic will not be work correctly right so human data engineering is still needed there next part is data governance uh, that means uh, whenever we are handling some data always there is something like compliance issues right uh, if you are handling uh, some some user data gdpr compliance issues means you cannot uh, store the pi data personal information data all that kind of a compliance issues what data is compliant what data is risky what to store what not to store uh, all these things has to be uh, implemented via a human data engineer only because ai cannot properly assist which data to be taken which not which is risky which is not so that final call always has to be a human data engineer we cannot fully rely on ai so data governance part will be still with a human data engineers okay then the cross functional collaboration what that means is whenever we are working on a data engineering project it's not like we will be like a working independently we have to work closely with the data analyst team data scientist team and maybe the product teams because product teams uh, generate this data data analyst team will take the data from data engineers uh, and write some formulas there data scientist also do the predictions on top of the data what data engineers prepare so this collaboration will continuously happen and depending upon the collaboration the business kpis will be taken out right so that deriving that business kpis cross team collaborations getting the requirement correctly implement the solution correctly all these things has to be done by human data engineers only ye cannot do that so human involvement is definitely needed wherever the there is a cross functional collaboration is need so these are all the areas where ye cannot replace uh, but as i discussed in a previous slide uh, the etl creation data qualities infrastructure provisioning monitoring so there ye can do most of the work for us so that means now the role has been evolved fully it's not like before so in future data engineers uh, work will change a bit uh, the expectation will change a bit so from writing a raw sql or python code for data fetching loading and transformation uh, maybe data engineers will be working more towards reviewing the code given by ai and uh, making it correct and making it work according to our business needs and then uh, manual debug of the broken pipelines or data anomalies might go away because ai can help us to highlight them and uh, uh, ai uh, and we will we might be using uh, ai to fix that right so we need to take that ai and we should have a knowledge to use this ai tools to find that anomalies and fix those anomalies or the pipeline failures etc again what are those ai tools we should be knowing it when it comes to data engineering and all i will be doing a next video there uh, that will help you a better okay and the third point is uh, previously we were like a data plumbers we will be designing everything uh, we will be like, like everything is a manual right but in future because ai will be doing the most of the things uh, we will be like a data product owners and we will be like data engineers will be making sure data is reliable accessible valuable uh, no duplicates uh, i mean a reliable and a 
business context oriented right information that 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 things has to be provided by us right so our role will change significantly we will leverage the ai tools and we will do most of the stuff using ai tools but at the same time lot of things has to be done by us uh, the architectural things the cross team collaborations the data governance part that means the gdpr compliance things so all these things will be still be there azure data engineers only are are for that matter a data engineer role okay so that's how the role evolves fully so the conclusion of the whole discussion is ai will not actually replace the data engineers but the role will get transformed significantly and we should know what ai tools are helpful for data engineers how to use them all that i will be doing a couple of videos there in future but yeah we should know them uh, if you found this video helpful guys please give a thumbs up and subscribe and let me know in the comments uh, any queries or concerns or suggest any topics to cover in the next videos thank you for watching have a nice day